Farm. We're incredibly excited to be sitting here with you. Um, it's been an amazing run, uh, amazing game, and just um, kind of in a euphoric mode here um, to think about the game. I mean, you know, they the first five minutes, I thought we were feeling each other out. I thought that they were punching, we're punching, and trying to establish who's going to put their style on the game and impose their will. Uh, as the first half rolled out, we got down a little bit. Uh, but as you saw yesterday, we never panic. And, you know, I thought once we decided we were going to start getting stops, I think in the last seven minutes we gave up three points. Um, and to look up and go from, you know, down a little bit to being in control of the game by 10, you know, it was a great credit to the group. And that's what we talked about before the game. You know, we prepared for this game from the first day of uh, training camp. And the things that we saw tonight, we've been working on all year defensively. And it's one of those things where, you know, for our guys to execute it and do it on this stage was tremendous. Second half, um, the key for us was we continued to score. We knew that they were coming back. They're obviously in a championship game, and they've had a phenomenal run. I was a little worried down the stretch because uh, they've made it, they've advanced on a buzzer beater before, so we didn't want to be in that situation. But uh, we had the key block in those closing seconds and made enough plays to win. And just so proud of our group. Open it to questions. Start here. <laughs> Joey, first of all, congratulations. I, I just have to ask you, this tonight was the one and only thing you hadn't yet achieved in your amazing college career. And the expectations on you have been so great. That must have been such a burden from last year when it didn't quite happen for you with the injury in the Sweet 16. It's been, everybody's been kind of whispering behind your back, are they gonna win the national championship all year? And we kept it to a dull roar, but now that it's over, now that you really can talk about it, what was the pressure like for you day by day, knowing that this is what everyone expected of you in 2017? Um, you know, we've obviously been thinking about it all year. I'd say the past the past three years, really. And, uh, you know, getting here two years ago, getting a taste of it, just kind of made us want us more, want it more. Um, well, last year was disappointing, but, um, you know, we try not to put too much pressure on ourselves, and I feel like we don't. Um, you know, we're a pretty loose group. But at the end of the day, it's tough to not think of the outcome of, you know, playing your last college game and, you know, hoping that's a win. You know, it just makes you want to put the work in every day. But, you know, those thoughts creep in where, you know, you, 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 know, you wake up sweating or you have a bad dream about, about not winning at all. And, and it's tough, but, uh, you know, winning the last college game means the world to me, means the world to our seniors. Um, and it's, it's a great feeling right now. We're so happy. It's crazy. <laughs> Isaiah, has it sunk in yet that you don't have another game to get ready for? No, not yet. I mean, this is this is amazing. This is what we worked all summer, all fall for. I mean, it's just surreal right now. Hey, Joey, um, how much was disappointment or disbelief at missing that free throw, and how much was it adrenaline to get down the court and get up so high to block that shot? Yeah, you know, biggest moment, um, I'll always be thinking about that missed free throw probably, but luckily that didn't really matter. Um, you know, I saw, who was it, 14 or, 14 or 30 driving down, you know, he'd been getting to the rim on that right side the whole day. And, you know, I saw him put his head down, and I said, "I'm going. I'm going up to meet him at the glass." Uh, and I was up there. Luckily, I was able to punch that away. And um, you know, we got the rebound, which was huge. Um, you know, a little closer down the stretch, we would have liked. You know, we, we felt like we could have we could have put him away a little bit earlier. But I mean, they're a tough team. They, they're fighters. But um, just a great feeling right now. Just, just crazy. <clears throat> Yeah, City, the players. Where do you guys come up with these tsunami-like runs you've had the last two nights? I mean, it's unbelievable. Last night, y'all come from 25 down and cut to four, and y'all close 25 to three at the half today. I mean, that's, you, you can't make that up. Um, yeah, I think, you know, when we when we get stops, it, it ignites the fast break. It allows us to get out, and then it's, you know, one guy makes a shot, and it's contagious. Um, so for us, you know, we feel like we're, we're going to score the ball. We try to, we're not too concerned with 
you know, our offensive, we don't really stress about that. But, you know, it's, it's been a defensive focus throughout this NCAA tournament where, you know, if we get stops, you know, good things are going to happen. And, you know, they, they scored, you know, mo almost all their points in the first, you know, 10 minutes of the first half. And, um, and then we cracked down on that run. We got stops. And all of a sudden, here come the Beavers. <laughs> uh, Nick, what was the, the plan specifically to, to – Stifle Orange a little bit. Seemed like you were helping quicker on him early on to kind of keep him from getting into the game. Um, how do you think you guys did uh, on the defensive end? Um, I think we did good overall. At, at points, we were kind of hugging to the shooters. Um, and we just didn't want, didn't want to let him go middle. But um, once we were compact, which we've been trying to do all year, we didn't do anything different. We just tried to uh, force sideline, baseline, keep guys out of the middle. So once we did that, we were able to get stops and get out on the break. Um, obviously, Joey finding his over the top was huge to get some momentum going. Um, Isaiah, congratulations on a great game tonight, the championship. Uh, I just have to ask you, any coach that's been around D3 will tell you what really separates the, the good to very good teams and the championship contenders are the ones that can get players like you that come down from Division Two or Division One and jump in midstream in the way that you did. There's got to be some players out there tonight that are in that situation you were in two years ago where they might be at a scholarship level but not in love with their situation. What would you say to a player like that who's thinking about coming to D3? Why should they take a look at Babson? I think the biggest thing is you have to find the right fit. I mean, from the, I, mean I knew Joey in high school. We played AAU together. And from the second that I thought about transferring, I mean, Joey told me that it was it's a family here. And the second I got here, Coach Brennan, the coaching staff, made me feel like family. And then these guys, these guys are my brothers. Like, it really is a family type thing. So I'd say anyone who's looking to transfer, you got to find the right fit. Coach, two two part question. First of all, what did you see Friday night in the in the Augustana William that made you change, maybe change some things today, or you know, change how you wanted to do things a little bit based on on that game? And the other part of that question, we talked about it on Thursday, winning the championship. What does it say about New England basketball? I'll take the second part first, Alex. Um, so I think that um, as far as New England basketball, I mean, you know, to have two New England Northeast teams here, you know, Williams was a play away. I mean, if Aronowitz hits the three, cuts the two instead of going up eight on the other end with the three, you know, I mean, they're, they're a young team. They're going to be back. They're, they're amazing. We're in culmination mode, I think, but, you know, it's been an unbelievable run for the last four years. So I think that, you know, there's a lot of battle-tested moments in the different leagues and in the non-conference schedule. And that's why we try and play five NESCACs a year so we can be ready for a team like Augustana. Uh, why don't you hit me with the first part again? Uh, what you saw Friday night, maybe in that game, changed what you wanted to do a little bit You know, I think the biggest thing is just, you know, they start the freshman as the shot blocker. And, you know, we just wanted to get him away from the basket so we could have space to cut, to drive. And so we have certain things we put in place. But, you know, like, you know, you talk about the Neskag, I mean, the Del Pesh twins, you know, are, are just as big and much stronger than him, <laughs> you know. And, and so we've seen it before. And so we, we, had, we had concepts and thoughts that we wanted to accomplish to, to create good opportunities. But I, I think it's really, you know, we talked about at the beginning, um, the things that we do every day in practice, we saw today, and we're prepared to play in this game because these guys have so much character, so much toughness, so much heart, and resiliency. You know, I mean, it's one of those things where you can't teach some of that stuff. And I think that, you know, watching Augustana last night, I, I thought it was a good game for us, um, only from the standpoint of they do a lot of things that we've seen, um, and and so we were fortunate to come out on top. And I thought. You know, like we said, the 25 to 3 run, you know, that's happened a lot for us this year. And it's just when these guys lock in defensively, then great things happen for us on offense, too. Over here. Uh, you guys essentially played two games in about 26 hours. Three of you played 40 minutes tonight. Um, coach and any of the players that want to address, how much were you kind of aware they were just kind of churning it down your throat as fast as they could to wear you out? and how challenging was it to hang on? I mean, we've been doing this the last four weeks, first with the new Mac, from the first round of the, first round of the NCAA tournament, and Sweet 16, Elite 8. I mean, we're used to it. And then with the media timeouts, especially today, they were a little longer, able to catch your breath a little bit, but there's nothing we haven't done before. So we were, we were conditioned, ready to go for that. 
Uh, I think that, you know, the biggest thing in those situations is you got to play to win. And for us, you know, I, I thought, you know, we went to the 1-4 low stuff because that was the best matchup. That was the best situation to get shots at the rim. Um, generally, we play more 4-out and 5-out. But I just didn't want to rely on jump shots. I wanted to try and get to the line. And, you know, Joey's obviously, you know, one of the best slashers to the rim you ever can find. And the fact that he's willing to give up and make other people better, too, with the pass is huge. So, you know, if you're going down the stretch, you want the ball in the best player's hand, and he's the best player in the country, in my opinion. And, you know, obviously his accolades speak for themselves. So we just figured, hey, let's put it in his hands. And then these other guys were able to play off of that and make good reads and make plays. Um, sure, I mean, we missed a free throw, um, which, you know, has happened before, <laughs> you know. And, you know, Joey came up with a, a tremendous block, and, and that's not the first time he's run down a ball. Uh, to, to save the game for us. So, you know, I think ultimately we trust in the defense and get stops. I thought they did a great job in the second half. You know, they did a lot of baseline drives. They were able to split our, our double on the baseline, and that got them the threes in the corner, probably three or four. I know the, the, the lefty there um, is a betting. Um, you know, he hit his three in the second half, and they did a good job kind of outnumbering us on the backside and making those plays. But, you know, it was one of those things where we knew we could make the adjustment. We just couldn't get uh, split in the trap anymore. And once we addressed that, we just trust our defense. And obviously, we did enough plays to win. Uh, I'd say being here two years ago, you know, did a lot for us. I mean, it was a tough pill to swallow. But, you know, you know, we didn't get caught up. You know, the, fir the first time down here, it's, you know, you can, it's easy to get caught up in the lights, you know, all the stuff that you do throughout the weekend here. Um, you know, all the media, the, you know, the big stadium, it's easy to get caught up in that. Um, but, you know, this time around, we were all business. Um, you know, we didn't, we didn't care for the extra stuff. We knew here, we were here to win two games. Um, and, you know, we had some guys that were there two years ago, but we also had a lot of guys that weren't. Like Isaiah wasn't here. Um, you know, Nikki wasn't playing that time. But, you know, we had that mentality coming into the weekend. Um, it, it was all business for us, and that's how we treated it. And um, I think it, it proved dividends for us. Um, <clears throat> I would just say, like, getting here, you kind of learn what it takes to get here. So um, I don't think it's really uh, – you get you get the experience of the game, but I think it's more the work ethic and the whole process of the whole season, staying healthy, taking care of your bodies and stuff like that. And uh, once you get back here, I mean, they're a young team, they're a really good team, so I definitely expect to see them back. Nick, congratulations on the national championship and a great performance here tonight. I, this weekend, you started the year so hot and teams started paying more attention to you and it, it kind of caused a little bit of a slump, but every game through this tournament, you've been able to get better and better and you didn't make all your shots this weekend, but every time your team was in one of those spots where it just felt like you had to have it, it seemed like you made all of those shots this weekend. How were you able to get to that space mentally where you were able to, to not be daunted by the moments and knock down all those big ones? Yeah, I think it all starts um, from the confidence that my coaches and teammates have in me. Um, they tell me if I'm open, let it fly. And obviously, Joey handled the ball for 40 minutes, seven assists, no turnovers. So um, he, he and Lowry, other guys, Matt Droney, they, they put me in spots where all I have to do is catch and shoot, and that's what I do. So um, not too difficult, and I don't think the, the stage really makes any difference, to be honest. One last question on the end. Isaiah and Nick, um, Joey talks about the block like it was just something that had to be done. Um, what was it like for you guys to see it happen? You know, the the guys driving to the basket in your national championships is going up, you know, chances going up off the glass, and he comes out of nowhere. What was it like for you guys? Yeah, I mean, I think that just defines uh, Joey's character. He's so humble. Um, he doesn't care who gets all the glory. He just wants to win, so... Um, his reaction to that, I mean, it was an incredible block. He's the best player in the country. So um, we kind of we, we kind of expected at this point, but um, it doesn't take away from how great of a play it was. Going off what Nick said, I mean, it really wasn't that surprising because we've seen him do that so many times. He's the best player in the country, I think, maybe one of the best call, Division three players of all time. And it's just not surprising to see that because he does it all the time. Great. Nick, Joey, Isaiah, Coach Brennan, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.